Today, let's talk about Tempo and Pro Tools. All right, so first of all, I already have a video out there on how to change key, meter, and tempo in Pro Tools. So if you want that kind of basic overview, I'll put a card on the screen or I'll put a link in the description. I'll probably try to do both. So go check that out if you want that kind of overview. With today, what I want to do is dig a little bit more into tempo specifically and changing tempo and doing gradual tempo. Tempio? Gradual tempo changes. Okay, so first of all, your tempo ruler is up here in your ruler section in Pro Tools. So right now we see my tempo. It is currently set to 120. That is the default in Pro Tools. I think it's the default in a lot of systems as well. It's a very common BPM for our uh, like pop music and stuff like that. So tempo. Um, if your tempo ruler is not displaying, right, you can click on this little drop down and just make sure that tempo is checked off. And that's how you can ensure that you can see that tempo ruler. So to set our tempo, right, we've talked about this before on the channel, but we can just double click here on this little red dot and you can type it in, change it to whatever you want. You can also use the little plus icon. So for example, if I want to move over here in my session and I want a change, like a sudden change, I can do the little plus and I can sh shift it to whatever I want it to be, right? So now it's 150 until this point in my session, now it's 100. So if I was, for example, usually I might have that at like the beginning of a measure. So I could make sure that's on the downbeat if I wanted to. So there you go, now it's on the downbeat. Um, but that's the basic idea of tempo, right? You can set the tempo for the whole session and leave it. You can make a change that's very abrupt. And another way to set the tempo, and this is one that I very commonly use in the studio because sometimes, for example, people will send you a track and they might not have included the tempo and you have to just figure it out. Or sometimes people will come in and they wanna record and they're like, you know, you go, what's the tempo? And they go, I don't know yet. And you go, okay, well, let's just feel it out, right? And so what you do for that is you click as if you're gonna set the tempo for your session. So I'm gonna click here on the red dot. And then when you're in the screen, you have to be in the screen, um, you just hit T on your keyboard. So T and you go T, like T for tempo, right? And you just hit it to whatever they're doing. So if it's, you know, a track that you've imported or it's the person in the room, sometimes if it's the person in the room, I'll have the musician themselves tap it, right? And they just tap it. And then you kind of see what number tends to pop up. And you kind of, usually it's like wavering around a few different numbers. Um, and then you kind of set the middle number or you go, oh, well, let's have it, um, you know, be whatever number it is that, that you feel is appropriate based on what's displaying. But that's what you do. So you just hit T to tap the tempo out. And then when you have it where you want it to be, um, you can either be like, okay, well, it's 110 now, but it was between like 110 and 113. So let's try 112, right? You can kind of play that game. And then you just hit OK. So now you're all set and you have tapped your tempo out. So that's what it's called as tapping your tempo, um, you know, using tap tempo to figure it out, that type of thing. So Oh, and just a quick segue here, right? The unit of measurement here is BPM, which stands for beats per minute. That might be really obvious to most of us, but um, you know, if you're new to this, I, I think it's good to mention it just in case anyone's new to it here. So a lot of us are comfortable setting our tempo, maybe doing a sudden tempo change in Pro Tools, but what if you want something to gradually change or to shift more gradually, right? You can kind of play the game and I've done this before where it's like, oh, well, let's just have it be, you know, if we're shifting from what was the starting point, 112 to 100 at this point. So maybe I'll have like add something right here. Where's my tempo here? I'll go from 112 to 109. And then maybe the next measure I'll go down to 107, right? And you can kind of play that game until it gets down to where you want it to be. Um, that's one way you can do it. And that's going to do it in a very um, stepwise incremental way, right? But a lot of times with music, we want it to kind of flow from one into the other. And if you want to have a click to help you with it, then um, this may not do what you want it to do, right? And just so we can listen here, right? I'm just going to hit play here. We do have the click active in this session. So we have 112 into 109, into 107, into 100. So we'll hear that stepwise shift as it progresses. So I'm gonna hit play. So you feel that? 
So it got a little bit slower with these, and then this was the biggest shift, but it's all stepwise, right? So if you want to make it more gradual, what you can do is first you have to make sure that this little conductor is active. So the conductor should be blue. And then what you do is you go over to tempo here and you can click to open this up. And now we have a graph. So it's like our automation graphs. It's very similar to our automation graphs. And you can see there are points for each shift that we have here. Um, but what I might want to do is I might, for example, want to have something that's a little more organic, a little more human. And with our pencil tool, which is what you're going to want to select here, with our pencil, pencil tool, you can do different shapes too. So you could have it go like a triangle shape, have it be more um, like linear and predictable in terms of how it shifts. But you can also just do freehand. So I'm just going to show you freehand. Um, they're all kind of similar though, right? Uh, so with freehand, I can just make it decrease in tempo and then raise in tempo, right? And so then something like this, let me play it for you. It's added a breakpoint on this graph for each little tiny shift. So it's created basically an automation graph for us based on what I drew, right? So now it's going to be more flowing and an organic feeling with the actual tempo change. So let's listen to this. So that's how you can do tempo changes that are more gradual and organic feeling. And, you know, when you're done setting them, you can just close this up and it'll still do that for you. And you can kind of see really quickly here that there are changes here. So you can expect changes there um, if you're looking at the screen and you're just kind of trying to predict what's going to happen here. So I think that's about it that I wanted to cover in this video. There's also stuff like tempo mapping in Pro Tools, but I think maybe that's a good topic for another video. So um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you've used this feature before. I know a lot of people are not aware of this feature. Um, I've seen people struggle with this before. So that's why I felt the need to make the video for it. So let me know what you think. Uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate all of that stuff. And I have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash noise. My patrons help support my channel. They help keep it independent. And I really, really, really appreciate each and every one of them. And for my Patreon patrons, we have a Discord server that we're all hanging out on. Uh, we have a book club on there. We're um, exchanging ideas, nerding out a little bit. It's been a lot of fun. So uh, feel free to check that out if you feel so inclined. Uh, you can join for as little as a dollar a month. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. I know of people trying to sell their services as professional engineers that don't know how to do a tempo change in Pro Tools. Yeah. Um, learning this stuff, learning stuff like how to properly import your audio, you know, it might be boring, but um, it's important. I think it's important. I'm biased, but I think it's important. All right. I don't know what else to say. Um, I've been learning bass, which has been a lot of fun. I've learned that bass is one of the most technique focused instruments that I've learned to play so far. Um, I guess theremin would be another one, right? But with bass, it's all about the technique. That's what I'm learning. And it's really cool and it's really interesting and it's a good challenge. And um, I'm going to see if I can make better bass lines for my beats. That's kind of the goal. So that's been a lot of fun. So, you know, if any of you have any recommendations for resources or things I should check out or accounts that I should follow uh, for bass, I would really, really appreciate it because I... Um, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going with it for a while. I think, um, it's been a lot of fun. Maybe one day I'll do voice lessons too, because I cannot sing for the life of me. Okay. Bye.